Hello guys, today I am going to show you the best NVIDIA settings you should be using if you want the highest FPS and the lowest input delay in your games. The first thing you'll want to do is set up your NVIDIA drivers properly. You can download the latest driver from NVIDIA website. This is usually the best route if you're playing the newest titles since the latest drivers come with bug fixes, stability improvements and even support for new technologies designed for those games. Once you've got your driver sorted out, the next step is opening up the NVIDIA control panel so we can tweak the best settings. To do that, just right click on your desktop and click on NVIDIA control panel. Once you're inside the NVIDIA control panel, click on adjust image settings with preview. Here, you'll want to pick the middle option, use the advanced 3D image settings. This lets us fully customize everything for maximum FPS. Just keep in mind, these tweaks will improve performance but may lower your game's visual quality a bit. Then head over to Manage 3D Setting option. Most of the options here should be set to Off or Application Controlled. As you scroll down, you'll see Low Latency Mode. This one's important. It can really cut down input delay, which is great for competitive play. Most people keep it on, but be aware it can sometimes reduce FPS. Then next is the Max Frame Rate option. You can keep this off so you can get maximum FPS and boost your gaming performance. Next, look for the multi-frame sampled AA setting. Just leave that one off since it doesn't really give you a boost and can actually hold back performance. Now, for power management mode, the best choice here is optimal power. It balances performance and efficiency really well. And unless you're running a super old graphics card, you don't need to force it to maximum performance. Right below that, you'll see shader cache size. Just keep that at the driver default. Moving on to texture filtering settings. Turn anisotropic sample optimization on, and then for texture filtering quality, start with high performance. But here's the thing. If you notice your GPU heating up or your game's feeling a bit laggy, dial it down to just performance. Honestly, that's the one I stick with most of the time because it gives me a nice balance between speed and stability. Leave trilinear optimization on. It's enabled by default, so you don't have to mess with it too much. For VSync, just set it to use the 3D application setting so your games can handle it on their own. Once you've gone through all of that, don't forget to hit the apply button at the bottom or else none of your changes will save. After you're done with the 3D settings, head over to the configure surround PhysX tab. In the PhysX settings, make sure your dedicated graphics card is selected from the drop-down menu instead of Auto or CPU. This makes sure your GPU is actually doing the heavy lifting when it comes to physics calculations in games. Move over to the display section and click on change resolution. This is where you can double check that you're running your monitor at its maximum refresh rate. So if you've got a 120 Hz or 60 Hz display, you'll want to make sure it's actually using that full refresh rate instead of being stuck at 50 Hz. It's a quick adjustment, but it makes a huge difference in how smooth your games feel. Next up, let's look at the Adjust Desktop Color Settings tab. This one's pretty straightforward, but can make a big difference depending on your personal preference. If you leave it at the default, your game might look a bit dull, but if you crank it up to something, everything instantly looks more colorful and vibrant. It really comes down to what you like. Some people love the extra pop, others prefer to keep it more natural. Totally your call. Now, another really important setting is adjust desktop size and position. For the best responsiveness, I recommend setting your main gaming monitor to full screen scaling, with GPU scaling enabled, and make sure you tick the override option as well. This setup reduces input lag and gives you that snappy feel during gameplay. If you've got a second monitor, you don't need to worry too much. It's fine to leave those on display, scaling, and aspect ratio. The main focus is making sure your primary gaming monitor is set up correctly with full screen GPU scaling. As for the rest of the options on this page, you can just leave them at their default settings. They don't really affect performance in a noticeable way. Now, those are the core NVIDIA control panel settings, but I also want to mention something that's been gaining popularity recently. NVIDIA Profile Inspector. It's a separate tool that lets you tweak deeper settings to lower graphical quality in very specific ways. Done right, this can actually give you even higher FPS and lower input delay. And that's it for today's video of NVIDIA Control Panel Settings Guide. If you found this video helpful, 
Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe for more tips, and of course, check out the other videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.